Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Daryl Green. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Zoe Lyons and Marcus Brigstock, Chris Adson, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. We start tonight with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board of six categories, Gary, which category would you like? I would like home news, please, Dara. OK, the category is home news, mm. and the answer is 35 billion. What is the question? Is it how many times have people hit refresh on the NatWest website this week? <laughs> <laughs> is it, in fact, how much I told the NatWest call centre I have in my account at the moment? Is it, what is God's next significant birthday? <laughs> is it, how many days do we have left of the Olympic torch relay? <laughs> After how many years does a bottle of Sillit Bang become safe to handle? <laughs> is it, uh, how many calories there are in a cheese and Eric Pickle sandwich? <laughs> is it, in fact, if you borrow a pound off Wonga.com... <laughs> Is it according to the Daily Mail, how many children does an average Somalian family have? <laughs> <laughs> how many episodes have there been of the long-running drama, Monsoon Poultry? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to stop going on about that, Hugh. You've just got to <laughs> buck up! <laughs> <laughs> is it what number Dappy from N-Dubs is in Line to the Throne? <laughs> will I win if Warhorse wins the derby? <laughs> Is it how many years older than her face does Madonna's neck look? <laughs> Is it how many extra tissues have been used worldwide since the publication of Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> Is it, is it very moving, then? Is it... Oh, yeah. Makes you cry, is it? I've not read it. <laughs> Any, uh, I think I know the right answer. Is it how many comedians have phoned their accountants this week? <laughs> <laughs> is this actually how much is our tax gap in the UK? That's absolutely right. Thank you very much. So it lies right down. Very good. The question I was looking for was, how much money does the Treasury lose due to tax avoidance in a year? This comes in a week when a number of famous faces were linked to tax avoidance schemes. Prime Minister David Cameron was criticised for singling out comedian Jimmy Carr's behaviour as morally wrong, while remaining silent on other individuals' questionable tax arrangements. So, who wants to comment on this? Uh, and who wants to get onto their moral high horse? Uh, I think it was though, wasn't it? The viewing figures for 8 out of 10 cats doubled last week. Yes. So I think it's only fair, as you as the host of Mock the Week, <laughs> I think you need to do some dodgy accountancy practices, yeah. or maybe just host a prostitute Nazi party. <laughs> and we all expect an invite. Right, can I do plan B? Uh, <laughs> I've got a brilliant tax avoidance scheme that I use personally. It's just earn, sod all. That's <laughs> how I... <laughs> This scheme, basically, the K2 scheme, yes. was where they sort of they hide your money for a while and then give it you back at a later date. Yes. Mm. Now, there's a much easier way of doing that. Just bank with Nat West. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for Jersey, because they're now trying to shake off the sort of tax avoidance tag and get back to their traditional reputation as Nazi sympathisers. <laughs> <laughs> And they all have really aggressive names, they're called K2, K2 and Peak Performance and Icebreaker. It is very difficult to tell tax avoidance schemes from protein shakes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so they do sound like something that will both save you money and build muscle mass. <laughs> uh, do, I, do I have to really pass for this? Do, I, do you know I think it's a real... Is it the muscles? children? No, not the children. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> The children, what the hell are you No, no, I don't part. not care about the children. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know I feel sorry. Do you want to feel sorry for Alan Carr? Alan Carr has probably in the last week fielded any number of questions from people <laughs> who didn't quite know which one it was. Uh, <laughs> but Alan Carr has just about shaken off people going, How do I stop smoking? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And now he's going to talk about tax. The, the person I feel sorry for is the lady who's apparently got the at Nat West Twitter name, a lady called Natalie Westerman. What <laughs> 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 abuse she's had this week. And, and none of us can claim complete uh, 
cleanliness in terms of tax avoid, particularly if you're self-employed anyway, because there, was, there were schemes that were picked up, film investment schemes, for example, that a lot of people had put money into. I myself, and I think we just have to say this, I'm part of a film investment scheme, I put mm -hmm. all my savings into the big budget production of Monsoon Poultry Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's right. Well, you're involved as well. I mean, because I play the role of Morag the nurse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I think we're going to make a lot of money back. It's, uh, yeah, it's me and Does you that say, uh, are yeah, involved. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's nice to know well. where the budget for this show goes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, by the way, how well I look as a nurse. Uh, yeah. Surprisingly fitting. Big shoulders. You've got, uh, you've got a hint of the reader's wives about no, you. Yeah. Yeah. If you. If you turned up at my bed in yeah. a hospital, <laughs> I'd <laughs> discharge myself. <laughs> Listen, I have no surprise, no doubt. You'd discharge yourself. <laughs> Why have Michael Gove and Nick Clegg clashed recently? It's Gove, as in move, movement. It's pronounced Gove. It's pronounced Gove. Gove. Yeah, Michael Gove. Yeah. Michael Gove. It's Michael Gove, yeah. You, literally, you could say this and I would have to go with it, because I have no true. idea. But it's I'm true. It's Michael... It's pronounced Gove. OK, why have Michael Gove and Nicholas Clegg... <laughs> why have Michael Thing and... <laughs> because Nick, uh, uh, Michael Gove... Uh, announced, announced a massive uh, education reform proposal and didn't tell either David Cameron or Nick Clegg or anyone else, including his friends and family. And that's what it's about, isn't it? They're looking to sort of bring back uh, ONA levels because they think that sort of GCSEs have been devalued by people getting too many good grades. And I don't think that is the issue. It's just that they moved the marking centre to Liverpool. So now it's all A, 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 A. Truth and things, though, Nick Clegg talking anything about education is somewhat tricky, isn't it, for him? And uh, obviously, you know, I feel that students will never ever forgive him for his, his U turn on tuition fees. So maybe he should just go the other way and actually have more of a go at students because I think it could be a vote winner, you know. So maybe try and tax links after shave, tax super noodles, <laughs> tax people with their pants showing. I think it could be, it could be all something. <laughs> So there, is, is, it, is it just is it weird? Because I didn't come through that system. Is it like you? Is, no, is, is, I think it shows. Know? I think it shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did come through a system. Thank you very much. What system did you come through? Then? I came through the Irish education system. The Irish education system. system where we, don't, where we don't we don't tinker quite as much as you do with the system. Don't make, like, so don't make that joke. <laughs> don't make that joke. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's been the same for years. The Irish education system hasn't it? Because it, you're graded from two Riley Ray A's down to fiddly D's. <laughs> Chris Addison, the Dublin gig on the next tour. No, but, it, but was it, is it going over the O-Levels? Was it, was it some special magical time, the O-Levels? The O-Levels? Yes. Is it, it was a magical yeah. time, but it was roughly the same time as I lost my virginity, that's why. <laughs> so is that was the, a hell of a French oral. <laughs> <laughs> Is calling for the old levels the political equivalent of going, oh, I wish they put Top of the Pops back on? Is yeah. it like that? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Just yeah. on bikes. He basically wants the 80s back. He wants everyone driving an Austin Allegro, because they were great, those cars. <laughs> Do I get the impression you lost your virginity in an Austin Allegro? Is that the... Uh, <laughs> You lost your virginity to an Austin Allegro. <laughs> 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 My God, that exhaust pipe was hot. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I lost mine to an Escort, does that count? <laughs> At the end of that round, the point is going to Chris, Hugh and Gary. <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask Hugh to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features the Prince of Wales. Right, here we go. Next pub, five down, four to go, six pints in each. <laughs> oh, what an enormous television. <laughs> How do you do that? Is it, is it 3D? Is it, it's very real. It's... That's because we are real, you see. This is a serving hatch in a, in a pub. Yes, uh, yes, I, uh, I knew this. I... <laughs> anyway, I tell you what, I'll have, uh, I'll have a pint of that, please. That is a charity collecting tape. <laughs> yes, I knew that. 
I knew that. In that case, I'll have, I'll have whatever's in the barrel. A pint of plunge plunger, please. And I'll pack it up all for scratchings. Unless you've got any biscuits, touchy originals, I, uh, I don't have to pay for them, you see, because uh, I own the company. <laughs> Saying, I was saying to these fellas here, I only drink warm bitter at the moment. Yes, well, you would if you spent four hours on a sodding royal barge. Yes, <laughs> yes. feel that. Still freezing. It's weeks ago. Freezing. Feel my hands. Yes. Yes. Oh, look, lovely. Here's a uh, pint of bitter. I love bitter, don't you? It's almost as, uh, almost as British as Will I Am wants to be. <laughs> uh, here, here, down the hatch. Get it down, you Zulu warrior. And it, oh, oh. Oh, that, uh, that uh, is a bit off, I think. It's, uh, yes, I'll tell you what, I think the old, uh, the old pipes need a bit of a clean. <laughs> As they said to Prince Philip. <laughs> I'll tell you what, here's a question. Are pints getting smaller, or is my hand getting bigger? <laughs> you show me the way to go home. You show me the way to go home. To be honest, it could be almost anywhere, because I have an enormous number of homes. And so why, why don't you join us on the next stage of the pub crawl? <laughs> I think it might be the crown and the scepter. It's as close as I'm going to get to either of them. <laughs> well done, too. Well done, mate. OK, now for a round call. Shut your loophole. This game involves Gary, Zoe and Chris, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is the stand-up challenge. I launched the Wheel of News, and whoever chooses to stop one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. First subject is the internet. Who wants to come in on that? Zoe. Ah, the internet. Love the internet. Actually, that actually reminds me, because I've uh, got to keep an eye on the time. I'm bidding on something on eBay this evening. It's, uh, Greece. <laughs> just me in Germany going head to head, fingers crossed. Oh, oh, I've actually got one of those Twitter trolls. I'm hit with the kids. I've got a Twitter troll. I don't... They're horrible things, though, these Twitter trolls, because they send you abuse online. And the thing I really hate about it is it's anonymous. That's what really annoys me. But just awful things they say. You're not funny, Zoe Lyons. Call yourself a comedian. Of all of my children, you're the least favourite. <laughs> People find it annoying, junk mail, but I think it's always worth going through. You know, you might miss a bargain. Only this week I went through my junk mail, and now I have cleverly consolidated all of my bank accounts into one Nigerian account. <laughs> and I have a much bigger penis. <laughs> okay, let's spin the wheel again. Travel, who wants to come in with that? I'll do that. Chris. <laughs> It's getting very expensive to travel abroad. I don't fly abroad anymore. You could go by EasyJet, uh, but I don't fly EasyJet. I'm too scared to fly EasyJet. I'm sure they're perfectly safe. I'm sure that their pilots are second to none. Best planes you could ask for. But imagine if you were on an EasyJet flight, eh? And you did crash on a snowy mountain top. <laughs> you all survived. Would you want to eat those people? <laughs> A shepherd's pie from Asda. I'm not having some woman in cerise leggings. It's not happening. <laughs> Easy J is essentially a middle class plot to keep BA to ourselves. That's what we've done. It's the same reason we're opening MS food on the motorway. That's why we've got somewhere to stop where we're not sat next to somebody going, What's a cock in Panina? <laughs> well, and now, thank God, Waitrose on the motorway, right? Which is. <laughs> I was in Waitrose, and not, not on the motorway, I was in Waitrose near where I live, and um, there was a woman ahead of me in the, in the basket queue. She had two items in her basket. She had a tin of Slim Fast and a pregnancy test kit. <laughs> she was thinking, well, it's one or the other. <laughs> Leaders with Gary. Let's see what topic you have. Let's spin the wheel. And it's relationships. Right, relationships. Uh, it's good to be here. Last time I was here, a girl asked me for sex. I had to disappoint her. 
we had sex. <laughs> but I'm trying to learn to be a more sensitive lover. I got a DVD, how to improve your foreplay technique. It was really good. I had to fast forward through the boring bit at the beginning. <laughs> Last night I had beef stew with dumplings. I shouldn't call her that, but she's a big girl. <laughs> I went to see the stalactites at Cheddar Gorge and our guide asked us not to try and crack one off and she wasn't even that attractive. <laughs> I still managed. <laughs> it was very dark. <laughs> this morning I went to a meeting in my premature ejaculator support group, but it turns out it's tomorrow. I think a few of the men started clapping before the end of that joke, by the way. <laughs> My girlfriend's dog died, so to cheer her up, I got an identical one. She was livid. What am I going to do with two dead dogs? <laughs> a friend of mine had a penis extension. Now his house looks really stupid. Of the England football team, but what does P H F E stand for? Is it everything that the England football team are no good at? Passing, headers, footwork, everything. <laughs> I think it is to do with the Rooney. I reckon it's uh, potato head fancies elderly. <laughs> <laughs> or pretend hair forever. <laughs> Is it, what, is, it Stephen, is it what Stephen Gerrard thinks is wrong with the team? Is it uh, passing, heading, football, eh? Uh... <laughs> I think it's proof that uh, education needs reform. Two of those men were asked to write GCSE. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that if you dial the number on their shorts, you get through to a helpline? <laughs> Lee Cole is covering his ears as if trying to protect himself from some awful screech. So is it player hears from X? <laughs> is it just simply players' heads found empty? <laughs> is it an extract from Boris Johnson's commentary? Peasants, half wits, fools, act of heights. <laughs> Any uh, another George Crackdown? Pregnant hooker frightens England. <laughs> It sadly always is. Penalty heartache for England. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Oh, there you go. Yes, the answer I'm giving was penalty heartache for England. This is the news uh, that after reaching the qualifying stages of the Euro 2012, England suffered penalty agony yet again as it crashed out of the tournament in a shootout against Italy, watched by a peak audience of 23 million people. Were you among them? Were you all watching it? Yes. yes. We, we weren't very good, where we couldn't hold the ball very well. And there was one moment, wasn't there, where the, uh, the referee, um, there was an Italian injury, and so he had to stop the play, and then he g gave the ball back to the English players, but explained to them that he wanted them to give it back to the Italians. And I was thinking, well, he didn't have to explain that. They were going to do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the game proceeded I... normal for 30 seconds. Yeah. They'll get it, they'll get it, they'll get it. I thought the whole game was very unfair. I mean, the Italians had a ball. Why didn't we have one? <laughs> We lost on penalties, didn't we? Right, which was very disappointing and we went out. But, I mean, if you look on the bright side, really, all that's happened is we would have played Germany in the next round. So it all that's happened, really, is we've lost on penalties four days earlier than we would have. <laughs> <laughs> in many ways, we've got those four days back. We've got those four days back. <laughs> I, I think that it was a, a very telling statistic, wasn't it, that England's most frequent passer was Ashley Cole with 44 passes, including the last one, of course, to the Italian goalkeeper <laughs> in the form of the penalty. Who was in the second most frequent passer? Would it have been Joe Hart, the goalkeeper? Joe Hart, the goalkeeper. Uh, <laughs> who was playing a lot of excitement. Joe, I thought Joe, Joe in the goal, though. God love him, he did his best. He did, he did a great did, job. He did his little kind of bear thing before each penalty. He was like, Arr, Arr, like a little, I'm your little tiger. I'm going to be your little tiger and I'm going to scare you. Do you know? like, he's doing little mimes in the goal. Like, it, was, I mean, it, was, it was like he's more like an uncle with a three-year-old. Yeah. Oh, I'm a bear. I'm going to chase you. <laughs> <laughs> you are digging the ball now. <laughs> Who's got a good kick? Who's got a good kick? <laughs> 
Oh, you go, oh. Oh, you have a good kick. Yes. <laughs> yeah. My, my favourite quarter-final was, in fact, a Greece against Germany. Because mm. I was hoping when the referee tossed the coin at the beginning, the Greek captain would nick it and piss off. <laughs> Seems to me, I'm a non-football uh, fan. The penalty thing seems a very cruel and arbitrary way of sorting out. Because they could do so many exciting things, like keep playing and every two minutes take a player off. Yeah. Once you're down to five, introduce a lion. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Something just lively and fun. There'd be a definite ending then, and you know, fewer players and stuff like that. Blindfold them, or like pinball, two ball screwball. Every two minutes, put another ball. ball on the pitch. Multi ball. He <laughs> suggested multi ball in the past. I like zombie ball, where you introduce a zombie and the zombie bites people and they become zombies. <laughs> uh, and eventually, you've only a few players left, like whatever. What maybe... happens if Rooney gets bitten, though? How would you know? <laughs> Wayne Rooney said that having an English manager uh, made it easier to understand. Tactic talks, uh, and uh, those are not the words he'd have used. So tactic uh, talks, that that would have he'd have gone on that. Yes, yes. <laughs> it, was, it was because uh, Fabio Capello was the previous manager and and didn't speak English particularly well. But Fabio Capello then went on to the radio interview when he heard this and said, every now and then when I try to explain tactics, things didn't work out. You know what? Maybe it's because Rudy doesn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, then. A saucer, a saucer of milk for Fabio Capello. <laughs> I think there are consolations to this tournament being over because now, at last, we don't have to hear politicians talking about it, which is my least favourite thing about international football tournaments. When politicians try to be a man of the people, it's excruciating. Much worse when it's Cameron, because he's so manifestly posh. Hearing him going, that's why I say, come on, England. I shall be wearing my second best top hat and my lucky monocle all the way through Euro 2012. <laughs> I love football. It's so rare you get to see working class people running about without having to chase them yourself with a yeah. stick. <laughs> On the plus side, though, the England fans were well behaved because there was a lot of talk, wasn't there, about the Polish and their abusive chanting and their hooliganism. And of course, that's what England, that's what we used to be the best in the world at that. One more thing that now the Poles do better than <laughs> we do. <laughs> Okay, and the positive Marcus Now we come to C's we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panels can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject is <laughs> on lighter things to read on a health insurance form. Would you describe the condition of your heart as A, very good, B, mediumly good, or C, BOO! <laughs> Do you ever temporary blackouts? <laughs> Do objects in the middle distance appear to be coming to me, to you, to me, to you? <laughs> you may be suffering from chuckle vision. Are you suffering from or have you ever had an STD, you slag? <laughs> Are you the only black guy in a horror film? <laughs> Have you ever experienced a burning sensation when you pee? Were you drunk at the time and holding a cigarette at the same time? <laughs> Please describe your alcohol intake. Moderate, average, excessive, Glaswegian. <laughs> What's your blood type? It can do 50 words a minute, innit, bruv? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Buddhists, what was your last cause of death? <laughs> do you suffer from dyslexia? If so, please put a bick in this tox. <laughs> Do you smoke? Can I have one? <laughs> do you hear voices? No. Are you deaf? No. So you do hear voices? Yes. I'm sorry you have lied. <laughs> <laughs> Was
would you describe yourself as very fit, quite fit, or a bit of a minger? <laughs> Do you suffer from dizziness, double vision, or seizures? Then why did you take a penalty for England? <laughs> OK, the next topic is... On likely lines from a war movie. Bad luck, Sir Winston. I'm afraid the Second World War has gone to penalties. <laughs> I'm going to go and rescue a horse that's trapped in the wire. <laughs> you put the potatoes on. <laughs> <laughs> We've located the battleship. It is in the squares B5, B6, B7, <laughs> I was sent up river in Vietnam, <laughs> tasked with killing a renegade colonel. That was one hell of a gap year. <laughs> I haven't seen a case of trench foot this bad since the Isle of Wight festival. <laughs> it is better to die on your feet than live on your knees. Anyway, enough about that Talisa video. <laughs> Well, if nothing else, this is going to make a lovely tapestry. <laughs> We're at 5,000 fathoms. Bing! The hull will never take it, Captain. Bing! And you going bing isn't helping us. <laughs> Louis, this could be the start of a beautiful friendship but only if you dress up as a nurse and give me a discharge. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, new intelligence has come in from the letters page of the Daily Mail, and it seems Herr Hitler has a point. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand the sound of the guns. <laughs> Why did I move to Tottenham? <laughs> In the Marines, our motto is, no one gets left behind. Private Cameron, where is your daughter? <laughs> we make an amphibious landing here. We scale the cliff, avoid the sweeper, bounce on the big balls, and I'll meet you in the wipeout zone. <laughs> Chaps, we're about to go over the top. I have a message for you from High Command. Simply says, War! What is a good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again now. War! Don't put your stuff in that one. It's got a really catchy edge on it. I call it the Hurt Locker. <laughs> medic! 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 I'll tell you what the problem is. I've been shouting my dick! <laughs> OK, and the boys are going to Chris here and Gary. Yeah. And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Chris Addison, Hugh Dez and Gary Delaney. Yeah. Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Zoe Lyons and Marcus Brickson. Thank you for watching. I'm Gary Green. Good night.